says. Cool. What's it's, the moon look like? It mo the moon looks like a fingernail, like the velociraptor nail on the foot. Like the velociraptor's foot? Yeah, yeah. like the hanging nail. Yeah, that's right. What else do you think about it? It kind of looks like a spinosaurus tooth, too. If I shine this light on your face and look, look at the screen, phone. Look at my phone. <laughs> Smile for the camera. Uh, we're drifting out of view here. This is such a cool telescope. What do you think about this one? Not cool. Not cool? Yeah. What's not cool about it? No dinosaur telescope. Here's a comparison between the Astro scan released in 1976 and a newer model on the left. I have a lot of sentimental value in this telescope. It was my dad's and one of the very first telescopes I ever looked through. It completely changed my outlook on astronomy because it was so easy to use. And I love having it now for star parties because children's response to it is so great. But this isn't a review, it's just a comparison for buyers and collectors. So let's get on with the video. A noticeable difference is here where you see AstroScan and Edmund Scientific. This is a newer version. The older will just say Edmund on it. It'll look like this. Often you see this solar warning removed or faded. In this case, it's completely gone. Here's a look inside the, the optics of one of the later models. I shouldn't say newer. Unfortunately, this is completely gone now. One of the most notable differences you can find is that a later model will have this black focuser tube and the um, focus and knobs itself are different. You see the difference here. So if you're out to buy one of the originals, it's not gonna have a black focuser like the one on the left. There's a big difference in the mountable strap also, and even the hardware. This is a later model. Here you can see the original. It's got a clip type strap with it. They're getting pretty hard to find. Here's a closer look at the knob. You'll notice on the original model it's not blackened like this later model that's another easy thing you can look for when you're purchasing one uh, the bodies are practically identical that was some damage to uh, my dad's and it had to be re-glued the basis of the original release and a later model are, are different also you notice this uh, locking knob here. Again, it's black on the, the later versions. And you got the same thing going on on the bottom of it. Easy thing to look for if you're interested in one of the older releases of this or the original release. The uh, mounting plate is also a lot heavier and thicker on the um, original model. The shape of, um, of which is practically the same, but you'll notice that the, the later models had a very 
thinner metallic wall to them. They're, they're lighter. I wouldn't say one outperformed the other. They're practically the same in use. Um, the original is probably a little bit more sturdy. If you can find this finder, it's, it's, it's uh, usually in pretty bad shape. There should be a felt eye protection piece on the end of it where, where you would have glasses making contact with it, that sort of thing. But these are getting really hard to find. They're usually pretty mucked up because it's really flimsy metal. Later, they introduced a uh, red dot finder with a re-releases of these things. If you can find this, it's pretty rare. Um, these are the, the later model eyepieces. The original came with um, RKE eyepieces, which they're highly sought after by people who collect these things and really hard to find. You're gonna pay a lot of money for them probably. And they're a lot better quality. Uh, these are, are really good eyepieces, don't get me wrong, but they're not the original. I don't have a set of the original to show you, unfortunately. And this is a later model bag. I'm not sure if the original ever came with one, in fact, uh, or, or what the differences are in this aspect of it, but this is the... Uh, later model bag so you can get a look at it you have an idea of what what that looks like some little zipper pouches on the inside for eyepieces and whatnot here they are side by side at first glance they're kind of hard to tell apart um, unless you know what you're looking for Again, this was, it's sentimental to me. It's something people either really love them or hate them. Um, it was my dad's telescope. I love the thing. And rather than getting it resurfaced and, and putting it back together and trying to collimate it, I opted to, to uh, purchase this later model and use it with the kids and that sort of thing. And their response to it, like I mentioned earlier, is great. I mean, a scope this fun can literally make or break somebody's interest in astronomy. If you if you hand this to, to a child, they can easily point it, and a lot of times it seems like they're having fun with it because of the way it operates. Just a cool little scope to me. If you want a really good review of the Astro Scan, I invite you to go see Ed Ting's review on the Astro Scan. It's a really good video, and I'll put a link to that in the uh, description. If you look at the optics, uh, here's a close look at the original versus the later model. There's little subtle differences in, in it overall. I don't know if this serial number appeared in the uh, the original because this thing's got so much age on it. I'm really strongly considering getting this put back together. It's but now that I have a working copy of a later model. It's kind of uh, maybe a later project. Again, we're looking at the caps uh, actually the only improvement I've seen for, for me personally is that the older objective cap here is, is thinner and weaker so that's the only improvement that I see that they've made with this thing um, over the years So I hope this was helpful to you collectors. You should be able to identify 
later models versus the original and parts and that sort of thing. And I appreciate your time watching the video. And as always, clear skies. We can sleep under the stars. We can sleep under the stars. Under the stars.